Welcome. I'm glad to see some familiar faces and some not so familiar, but um, glad that you all are giving up part of your day. Um, thermal imaging, detecting heat signals. If everybody would just mute their microphones, that probably would be the best thing. And so we can uh, all communicate. And if you want to, we have a chat box going. So if you want to like write anything to us or ask a question as we're going along, I think you can do that. We've got Danae and Michelle at Music Play Online who are kind of monitoring this and Jason from JJ and me who's uh, listening in as well. So anything comes up, you can all ask away um, and hopefully this will go very smoothly. Um, this uh, musical musicals and more, I think is what we call this webinar today. And so I, it was just an opportunity really for me to introduce you to some of the musicals and things that are available on Music Play Online. There's a bunch of stuff there. If you haven't really um, looked at look through it yet, or if you're trying to decide if you want to take this on uh, for this year, um, this is a good time to do that. And most of you, if you're interested, have, have probably done musicals before. You don't need, need me necessarily to tell you why you should do a musical. But as I was, I was thinking about this little webinar that we were going to do, I thought, you know, I'm going to make up some I have reasons that I think of doing musicals are important. Um, the number one thing I think is that you just never forget it your whole life. And most of you who have probably been in a musical as a little kid or something, you I know for me, my first musical that I was ever in, I've told some of you this story before, was a musical called um, Mulligan's Magic. And I was sort of this snake oil salesman who stood up on a box and sang a song that went, it polishes silver, polishes gold, that's Mulligan's magic. It makes keeps young folks from growing old, that's Mulligan's magic. It really was like a predestinated destinate that I was going to do this for a living, I think. Anyway, so um, kids, I think most of you will probably remember the first musical you were ever in, but... Um, I kind of came up with these 10, 10 reasons that maybe you could give um, to your, if you ever needed to convince a school board or a principal or a fellow teacher or parents or um, and anybody else of why we want, you think it's important because musicals take a lot of time and a lot of energy and a lot of, um, um, a lot of people have to get involved and buy into it. And it's way more rewarding if from the get-go, everybody does buy into it and is behind you. So you don't have to do everything yourself. In fact, I think as you get more musicals you do, you'll find out the more you delegate, the better and uh, letting other people help you. So like for me, um, you know, the number one thing that we try to do when we're writing musicals for you is to make them easy. Um, and I don't mean that that you don't need to know anything about putting together a musical, but we try here to give you as many tools as we possibly can, including script, stage directions, choreography, videos, um, um, demonstration recordings of both the songs and the dialogue and um, just everything you can possibly do. So even if you don't have much experience doing musicals, maybe you never were in one yourself, um, we try to make it easy for you. That's the number one thing. The second thing is that it, I think it's just um, a great opportunity to reinforce what they're already studying in curriculum. And that doesn't mean just in music class, although it does do that. Obviously, it's going to support the things that you want to do in music class. But in, when we're thinking about writing musicals, we're also trying to um, incorporate maybe something from some other discipline in the school um, or in your situation where we're trying to um, reinforce that makes you you makes you such a hit with the rest of the faculty. If somehow, why, you know, how did they know that? How did they know the math facts or how did they know multiplication tables or how did they know the names of the presidents? Whatever it might be, they learned it in music class by doing a musical. So that that's another thing. The third reason is that I think um, doing musicals is such a great way to just sort of spark a learning uh, process, you know, this real hands-on um, experience that makes like curriculum really come alive for kids when they're doing it with a musical and they're acting it out and singing these songs. Then no, my, my number fourth reason is that um, if you're working with kids, like maybe that English isn't their first language or um, all of that, music is such a great way to um, get reluctant learners you know, maybe because English is a second language or something like that, or they're just shy. 
or they've never been in front of people before. Um, musicals are a great way to get everybody involved at a different level, at whatever level they're comfortable with. And I think one, you know, you're, you're really gifted kids who could just do this, who have showbiz built into them. They're going to have a blast making it their own. But maybe even more rewarding for you might be that the way that musicals can bring along those shy kids or those kids who never felt they could get up and and you know, present in front of people. I was teaching in Shanghai, uh, China one time, and I, I did a workshop for music teachers and their parents of the school of the kids. And one of the parents said, how come American kids um, are so out there all the time? They're so able to get up on stage and show their stuff. And I just said, well, that, because in, in American kids, and I think it's true in Canadian kids too, you're sort of expected to get up there and show your stuff. Right off the bat, um, early on in your life, you know, it's show and tell, or it's even on the soccer field or the basketball field or whatever it is you're doing. But especially in music and in musicals, you get a chance to stand up, show what you got. And it, and I think it's a great skill for, for a lifetime. So that that's a great way, I think. Even your special education kids, you know, will find a place in the musical um, that I think is just a, a great a great place for them and they'll feel really valued. My, my fifth reason was that it, it builds classroom camaraderie. You know, kids come together when they're working on a musical and they've got this thing that, that they're working towards a real goal. And I think it, it can really help to bring, it, it builds teamwork and, and um, cooperation and, and mutual support and they support each other. And, and it, if it's presented right, it can do that. The sixth reason is that it's, an, it's a great way to integrate the other arts, you know, the visual arts and drama and, um, you know, all the uh, speech and debates or, you know, any of those kind of things, they're all involved in musicals. So, so I think that's another great rationale and justification is that you're integrating the arts. Um, this, my seventh thing that I wrote down was great, it, our musicals hopefully have great flexibility. And I want to really make this point clear is, is that when you do one of our musicals, this may not be the case with every publishing company. I'm not sure. But when you're doing one of my musicals, and I think and Denise's musicals here on Music Play Online, you are encouraged to make it your own. Do whatever you want with it. Add a song. Take a song out. Replace a song. Add more characters. Um, you know, do, do anything you want. And I always use the example of like when you go to a store and you buy a can of mushroom soup, you paid for that mushroom soup. Now it says add two cans of water and you make, I have no idea how to make mushroom soup, but you know, the truth, if you bought that, if you want to throw it over some green beans and put some you know, onions on top and take it to the church picnic, you have the right to do that. You paid for it, you did it. So as long as you bought the musical or subscribe to Music Play Online, you have the right to take that can of mushroom soup, which is our musical, and do whatever you want with it. Okay, so I just, you don't have to ask permission, just do it. Make it your own. If it's fantastic, take the credit. If it stinks, you can blame me. It doesn't matter. I'm old, you know. And so anyway, so that's the flexibility thing. Number eight is that it's a great, um, it's a great way to, to get cooperation with maybe some of your, um, like if you've got homeschoolers, some of you might even teach in homeschool situations where you're trying to bring kids together or drama programs or other sort of school cooperatives. You can bring, this is, a, musicals are a great way to bring all those different diverse elements together. Number nine, this is a really great one, especially for the younger kids, but I think all the way through is it's a great way to increase parental involvement, getting those parents involved. One of the musicals that we have is called um, Bunnies, and it's, it's for the littlest kids, but last year, last summer we did Bunnies, and all the, all the costumes are with the kids, you know, they get those bunnies off, and they had a little puppy tails. Well, it was so funny because all the parents also wore bunny ears. So when you're sitting in the audience, you're watching the stage and the kids upstage are all the bunnies. In the audience, you saw the parents with their bunny ears on the back, but they bought into it. The kids saw that their parents were supporting them. And especially for the younger kids, parents are still excited about making costumes and being involved in their kids' lives day, every, every single day. So I think it's a great way to do that. Number 10 is that they're fun, they're educational, and they're rewarding. And teachers and administrators and parents they absolutely love, grandparents. They love seeing their kids involved in a musical. They 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 come to them and they can't believe that that's their kid, the same one that comes home at the end of the day. They're just shocked, 
And so, the, and they're so glad that you are the one that helped bring that out of those kids. So I think that's it. But it's, okay, so that's 10. And we're going to get, I'm going to put up this PDF or something like that later. I, we'll include these 11 if you want to use them or add to them. But the number 11 rule is, and maybe my number one rule for why I think it's great to do musicals, is that what you learn through music, you don't forget. That's just my mantra for life in general. And I use the example of when we, Roger Emerson and I wrote a musical called The Musical Adventures of Lewis and Clark. And the fifth grade was doing it and, and, and uh, Westwood Expansion was part of their curriculum. And the fifth grade teacher came down to the music room and said, hey, what are you doing down there in that music classroom? And the music teacher said, well, what are you talking about? Well, today we started our unit on, on Lewis and Clark. And I asked any, all the kids, who knows anything about Lewis and Clark? And the whole fifth grade stood up and went, it was 18 for another day before I left my home and family. You know? And I don't know that it's crucial knowledge, but they're going to remember forever that it was 18 for another day before that Lewis and Clark took off on their great adventures. And they learned it by doing a musical. Okay, so that you don't maybe even need 11 reasons, but if that helps, you are welcome to them or make them again, make them your own. Now I want to show you what we have available for you at Music Play Online because there's a ton of stuff and how you get to it. So I'm going to share my screen here and I'm sort of a geezer here. So bear with me if I do something weird. Um, I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to um, get you on Music Play Online first of all. So here we go. Um, here we go. Now I'll share this with you. There you can see my calendar. <laughs> Find out where I'm going to be this week. Let's see. Okay. Now, are you wave your hand if you're seeing my screen. Are you seeing Music Play Online, everybody? Great. Okay. So um, let me see now if I can go back up here and make it uh, full screen so you can really see it here. Uh, okay. So when you go on, you've probably all seen this before. Um, this is your opening thing, and I go on as an educator here. And up comes my uh, name and my login numbers. So I'm going to log in. I get and the, and I, this is my favorite page. It comes to here. All right, I got to keep moving my faces around. But and you'll see all our faces. And there's lots of ways to get to these things. But if you really just want to get to musicals and reviews, which is what we're talking about today, I would suggest you go right here to this tab, musicals and reviews. It's a little weird now when you open it up. It's going to show you every song in every musical that's in Music Play Online. So there's one more step, and this one's really important that I think really, really help you. Go over here under Filter by Content and click on Units. And that's what happens. Now you see all the musicals and all the musical reviews that are with their icons. So you can, you can really look through them and you can say, okay, Instead of, and the songs will be in order and the scripts and all the different elements of what the musical is are going to be here. And as you can see, we already have quite a few of them. Um, we have, I'm going to try to get some of you. Okay, there we go. We have um, over here, uh, if I just start from the top and go through them, you can see that there's what? One, two, three, four, five, six, 20, 25 different shows that you can choose from right off the bat. And I'm not going to spend a whole bunch of time on all of them, but I know here at the beginning of the year, most of you are thinking about, okay, maybe your your um, you know your principal is coming to you and saying, hey, how about a um, Veterans Day program or something like that in the fall? And maybe you're also trying to choose something that you might do at the holidays. So um, coming up the the winter holidays or Christmas, whatever you might be celebrating. So I thought um, I, I'll kind of just concentrate on mostly on those, but sort of show you a little bit of each one. We, I kind of divide them into two different groups. They are There are musicals and there are reviews. And when I say reviews, basically what I'm saying is that it, it maybe isn't so much of a plot. It's more like a program where you have some speaking in between songs that the kids basically usually play themselves and they're just like as kind of introducing the next song. So it would be more of a musical review than something with a plot and characters and all, all that kind of thing. The first one that comes up here is American Song. I'm just gonna click on it and I'll show you what happens. If I click on American Song, up come all of the elements of American Song. Now this is a patriotic show and I wanna show, which of course would lend itself towards any changes that you wanna make. 
But what I would do if I were you is I was looking across this unit and trying to decide if I want to do this. And over here, we say what we think it would be for. It might be for Veterans Day, Independence Day, Memorial Day. Here in the fall, I would think sort of Veterans Day. And again, um, then you come down here and here are basic resources that are available. Right off the bat, here's the America Song script. So I'm going to open that up. Here's the script. And you'll see it as a PDF right here, the whole thing. And when I tell you, look, here's here why I say it's like a program. The first speaker says, good evening or afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, please rise and join for the singing of the national anthem. And basically, you sing the national anthem. And we give you all the, rec the recording for it and everything, so you're going to go along. Okay, the second song is one called We the People. All right. So then after we, the song We the People, which we could do a little bit of it if you want to, I can go back. Um, if I was going to go back to this, I would just click back to, I got so many things on my uh, here. If I want to move faces back and forth here, um, I'm going to go back and try to show you American Song. Let's see if I can do this without completely messing it up. And here's when, when I get frustrated or open, um, messed up. My first thing, I my favorite button on all of Music Play Online is Discover, <laughs> because I can always go back to Discover, and it takes me right back to here. And then I can do my two moves, musicals. I can do my units here. I'm right back to American Song. And if I we started with the Star Spangled Banner, the second one we went to was the We the People. And here are the different, we have, have it with notation. We're going to have just the lyrics only. I'm going to have a choreography teaching video, which I break down the song slowly, and then a video in which we the kids can just dance along with me. Why don't we sing a little bit of this one? Here's the notation for the song, We the People, and it's about electing a president. Hope you can hear it. Yeah, we're not hearing any sound on our end, John. Now, did were you able to hear that? No, that was no because okay. So let me try this. I'm gonna stop sharing. I'm gonna share again, and this time I'm gonna remember to share my sound as well. So I'm gonna here share my screen, share my sound. Then I think I can go here. I bet this will work a lot better. People get together and we all make a choice and every vote gives their choice a voice. Yes, every vote gives their choice a voice. Is that better? Well, yes. So we name them all <laughs> and then we sing it all again. So you get the idea. And that that's one of those examples of if you learn this early in the year, for instance, like if you learn this as part of your Veterans Day program, it'll show up again in for President's Day when you rolls around in February or something. You could use that song again. So a lot of these things can go across one term into another. Another example of that would be this I shall not be moved. Um, this is would be perfect for Veterans Day. And this one, uh, we did an arrangement in which we celebrated um, African-Americans who have made a great contribution to um, our history. 
And so part of it is just shouting out the names of important African-Americans. And part of what I thought was cool about that is that the kids, some of them won't even know all of these names. But once they've sung them in this, then the assignment can be, OK, each one of you kids go and research one of these one of these characters um, and tell tell the rest of the class or the audience who this person is that we're celebrating just to give you an idea. But this because this would also work then great when you get to um, African-American History Month um, in February. So here's a little I shall not be moved. Tubman, Rosa Parks, Althea Gibson, Arthur Ashe, Barbara Jordan, Maya Angelou, Langston Hughes, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. I shall not be moved. I shall not be moved. George Washington Carver, Barack Obama, Alvin Ailey, Mahalia Jackson, Marian Anderson. Anyway, you get the idea, so um, that would be great. Then finally, um, this next song, if you're if it's Veterans Day for you coming up and you're looking for just one song, if you can't, we can't put a whole musical together, let me suggest this one. It's a song um, called a soldier, I sing this song for you. And it's really just a thank you song um, for soldiers. And But it would work great at Veterans Day, Memorial Day, anytime that you think you're going to have some veterans or soldiers in your audience, here's a thank you song for them.
All right. Well, I, it's hard to stop that one in the middle of it. <laughs> so I just keep going. And then finally, um, I, the other thing I wanted to show you, then this in this musical, we go into a George M. Cohen medley. So you can drop the flag, release the doves and all of that. And we saw, I have a song about big dreams, um, big American dreams. And each one of these was have the choreography things and hold on to dreams. And then finally, we end it with a, with a, um, uh, a so called American Song, which you'll recognize some of these songs. And this one, you can see all of them have the um, these things with them, teaching choreography. So if you want to get up and dance, Denise always thinks we should make these webinars something where people jump up and actually dance along. So I'm going to play the full choreography video for this last song in the American Song. And if you want to get up and dance with me, feel free. Here it goes. Start with our heads down, feet apart, hands behind our backs. Look up slowly. You can sort of see I did Scoop one hand. Front and back version. So your kids can watch on the right side there if they want to do it exactly like you. Bring it together. First from high to low. Jump clap. Four times. Three point turn. Slide. Again, three jump claps. Sway snap. Jump clap. Three point turn. Slide. Jump clap. Hand to your heart. Clap presents. Hand to your heart. All right. Well, you get the idea. I don't want to spend any more time on that because I want to. We got so much to get through here. So you get. If you're looking for a patriotic song, a patriotic musical to do. This, I think, would be a good a good choice for you. And again, leave out whatever you don't want to use. So um, let's go on a little bit. I'm going to go back to, um, as you see, I'm already in the units, and all of the musicals here are listed right here on this side. I don't think there's much fun to look at, but you get titles, and you can jump to each one of them. For instance, I can jump to Big Dreams, a musical. And um, the Big Dreams musical, this is one... I would suggest if you were doing this would be to start the beginning of the year with this song that is called um, Where Our Dreams Begin. And it's really saying, OK, here we are. We made it to fourth grade or we made it to fifth grade. Or we made it to sixth grade, whatever it is. And you'd learn this song. This is where our dreams begin. And then this is a uh, it does. It is going to have a script. So I'll show you like here I'm clicking. I've got Big Dreams Musical Review. Um, up comes the script. This is the teacher's script and score, so it's going to have everything in it. It means it's going to have the script here, and it's going to have the songs with the accompaniment tracks and choreography notes written in above each one of them. These are all PDFs. You can either um, print them out or you can just project them. Or if you're going to do this live, you would have the pianist uh, would be able to have a copy on all of that. So um, that would be uh, but one possibility. I'm having a hard time just learning how to just jump back one space here. Um, okay. Okay. Um, well, again, I just go back to my units. And we are right now. Um, Okay, and I always go back to my when I'm lost and can't figure out where I am. I go back to my to my discover and my units. And here we are. This is so. This is this big dream musical they're going through here right now. And what what I so I would start with that song. Good grief. Um, now what did I do? I know you're loving this because it's. Uh, here we go. It happens to you all the time. And people are staring at you. 
it's always harder. But this uh, song, the Big Dream song, you would start at the beginning of the year, and then I would suggest you learn that song early, and you're going to go through these. We've got a song at the end called Big Dreams, which would be a great end of the year song, because it's all about I still have these dreams. Um, so the beginning of the year is uh, this is where dreams begin, and then Big Dreams would end it. But we, it's all also songs about, um, you know, at the beginning of the year, you're always going to have one like fourth grader who looks at you and you say, let's do this. And they roll their eyes and like all your insecurities come screaming out of you. This is a song called Everybody Say Yes. And the answer is just you always you want everybody to say yes and be positive. And when I say let's do something, they get all excited about it. So it's a way of, of kind of reinforcing some of these good um the uh, you know good traits, the human traits that you want them to be. I should not be moved. We have a thankful song. If you're looking for something to do for Thanksgiving or just to, uh, you should always have a thankful song in your back pocket anyway, just to use whenever a teacher retires or whenever there's somebody's done something nice for your class, they can sing this song called Thankful and and have it ready to go. And at the oh, and at the end of the year, then you would end the show and your graduation song called Hold On to Your Dream. So it's a whole way of kind of this whole dream motif, but it can you can learn songs throughout the year. And by the end of the year, you'll have this spring show to show off for graduation around that time of year. OK, and when, the one more thing I really like about this particular little musical is that it's a great opportunity for kids to write some of their own script. In the script that I gave you, it does set up each song, but I think it would be great to have the kids talk about what their dreams are. And um, you could pick a few of them, include them as part of the program would be uh, what are their big dreams? What do they wish for? Where are they going? OK, let me zip through a few more of these musicals. If you're looking for something for spring, that would be for the um, littlest kids. I've mentioned it before. This is Bunnies, Bunnies the musical, and it's basically um about, uh, well, they all play bunnies. And so it's cute, the cute factor sort of through the roof. And the whole idea of the musical, the very deep plot is that they're trying to go to a bunny hop. And by the time they get to the, um, but to get to the bunny hop, they have to go through a dark, scary forest, which is full of um, coyotes and wolves and scary animals like that. So some of the kids get to play wolves and they get to sing a song called Howl. And, um, we had some kids down in Texas uh, do do it for us. So we even put a little bit of kids demo here. You can see some actual kids performing it. And um, by the end, they find that the they sing us a little song called Adorable. And because they think that's their secret weapon is that they're just so adorable. And uh, here I'll do just a little bit of Adorable for you. Here we, um. <clears throat> They get to the end, the wolves and everything just think they're so cute they couldn't possibly uh, harm them. And so they join them and go to the bunny hop. And in the end, the show ends at the bunny hop, and your audience and parents and everybody gets up and does the bunny hop. You know, da 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 da. We just wrote a new song called The Bunny Hop for them to do that under. So, I mean, that's a good spring musical, especially for your K2s. We have um, two little cookies musicals. This one's Christmas cookies, but we also have just regular cookies. And we, we first wrote cookies, the musical, when all the kids on this one, again, it's for your youngest ones. They all play cookies. So they get to be either ginger snaps who are all snapping. They've got molasses cookies who talk real slow all the time. We've got uh, oh, lady fingers and Oreos and chocolate chip cookies and, and a fortune cookie who always can tell the future. And the whole plot is that the kids are, that, that the cookies have all just been told that they're being taken to a cookie exchange. 
and they're all going to be sent off to different places mixed up with people who are not of their batch and they're very scared because they want to they feel comfortable in their own batch and so this idea of getting split up is very scary to them um but then they find the lesson of this thing is that actually um Oh, there's also, of course, puppies involved. So puppies come running out and they do a song called Who Wants Who Wants Cookie? We want a cookie. Ruff, 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 ruff. Who wants cookie? We want a cookie. I can't get enough. Anyway, yeah, I know. This is what I do for a living. So um, and find, they find out and they learn that it's actually really fun to, to make new friends. And so there's fun for um, molasses cookies to get to be friends with Oreos and whatnot. And um, they're all excited about that. And they get to the cookie exchange and it's all everybody's happy. So we did, if you want to do this at Christmas time, I, um, I, all I did was it's basically the same musical, but I added Christmas cookies. So you can have some cookies that are shaped like Christmas trees and, you know, um, candy canes and all of that. And all they do is stand in, on one side of the stage and every once in a while they sing a Christmas carol and all the other cookies go, ah, Christmas cookies. So I know it's pretty amazing. So, um, but again, these little K2 musicals, they run 25, 30 minutes or like two hours, depending on your kids. But um, hopefully you can, you'll find that. Cold Snap is another winter musical. This one is um, basically one of those, if you want to cover all your holidays. In fact, Denise thinks we should change the name of it to Cold Snap Around the World or something like that, just because it's one of those, what happens is that the kids all get stuck at school in a blizzard and they can't get home for Christmas. And so they take the opportunity to teach each other about the traditions of their own family. So there's a Hanukkah song, a Kwanzaa song, um, a Christmas song. We even did a, a, a that. Um, and so all the different all the different elements they get to teach each other about their their little um, things and and their traditions. And at the end, so Hanukkah, La Posada song, a Kwanzaa song, um, Hope in the Air This Christmas is actually a Christian Christmas song and a holiday swing song. And at the end of it, the sky clears and they all get to go home. But they've, in the meantime, really enjoyed learning about each other's um, uh, study or uh, traditions in their family. Composing America, this is a musical review, and it's a review in, that celebrates um, American composers. And you'll see the, the list of songs is just so strong. It's um, I Love a Piano, so we've got Joan Kern, we've got Gershwin, we've got Scott Joplin, Maple Leaf Rag, we got uh, Look for the Silver Lining, Give My Regards to George M. Cohen. So, and it's again, it's a script that ties it all together that tells about those care, those composers of America, of American music. Okay, Friends Forever. This musical is about um, basically it's a friendship friendship musical, and it's a and it's kind of a more of a, again about a review. The kids play themselves, but they're all songs that really celebrate being good friends with each other. So, and at the beginning they would sing a song called "Good Time Tonight," which is kind of a, a line dance song to get things started. But then they they the plot is basically they're concerned that the whole world is getting kind of grumpy. Everybody's just kind of cranky. And so the kids in the in the show decide that they are going to start a wave of kindness. And so they do this song called Wave of Kindness, in which you get the whole audience and everybody else doing the wave and trying to spread that. And the whole message of, you know, let's go out and be a light to the world and never going to give up. So it's a positive attitude thing. And, and this song called Your Family is really about the, dip, you know, what's what's the definition of a family anymore? These Everybody comes from so many different things. And to, you know, one parent families or the kids who are being raised by their grandparents or, you know, couple, you know, they got two dads and two moms, you know, there's just so many different traditions. And all this is saying is that your family is the people who love you. And so and then they sing this song called Friends Forever. And every one of them, again, has all the elements that we uh, have talked about. This, some of them even have bucket drumming uh, lessons like Friends Forever is kind of a great rock beat. So we have Mr. Frank who does a bucket drumming part. So your kids who maybe don't want to dance so much can sit there and play bucket drums and it all works together. Um, no, one of our newest musicals here is Gnomes for the Holiday. Um, this one is, uh, uh, again, obviously for the holidays. But um, here we'll just play a little bit of the opening song. Gnomes are these you know garden characters who are cousins to elves. And um, they sing and they love to tell stupid, corny jokes. So here's the opening song to uh, Gnomes for the Holidays.
basically the, the, the joke of the musical kind of is that there's gnomes and then there's kids. And the kid, every time the kids show up on stage, the gnomes freeze like they're in a garden. So they, they're holding a fish pole or they're holding a shovel or they're holding a pail, whatever gnomes do. And these kids just don't believe that, um, that gnomes actually exist or that elves, in fact, these kids don't believe in anything. So, in fact, the kids, um, the gnomes are standing there and the kids come up and like knock on their heads and say, see, it's not alive. Or they pull on their beard and finally the gnomes get fed up with it and they, they come alive. And then and then they find out they got to go to the North Pole to help out the elves, get ready for Christmas, their cousins. And all of a sudden the kids believe in miracles. And um, so there we have a miracle song. So it has sort of a metaphor for the whole holiday Christmas season about believing in things you can't always see. So that's what that's about. All right, going on, moving along here. Just Sing is another musical review. And so meaning script, a uh, script that ties a bunch of songs together. This one has songs that um, just have a great upbeat feeling. So um, that reinforce some sort of um, character trait that we want to reinforce. Three little birds, we got gimme, gimme, gimme. And, and it's a great opportunity. It was like one of the kids is kind of naughty. So they get him to change. And he says, Operation New Me, you know, and so um, you, and it's another one, because it's just a review, you can add, take out songs. We've got a great song called Stand Up, which is about kids standing up for what they believe in and fighting for what's right, all of that. You, but you could we use that thankful song again here, and then a song called Just Sing to Tie It Together. But it's a great opportunity that you could bring together elements, any songs that you want to and create, especially character development kinds of things. The other brand new musical we have this year is one called Pandemonium. And this one, you know, you can have up to like 35 pandas on stage. And basically it's the story of Pandora's box in which there's a present that arrives that they're not supposed to open, but one naughty little panda opens one of them anyway and out jumps all the woes of the world, the greed and, and um, sickness and all of the things that come out. Everything goes wrong. The world is upside down. But the one then, as you know, the story of Pan, Pandora's box is one thing left in the box and finally out jumps um, hope. And the character plays hope. And we did a really fun thing. We had a, like the principal or an adult play hope, the character hope, and they come out with a, you know, wings and a tutu and a wand and all that it was hysterical. You can go online. We did it at last summer's uh, music play workshop. And you can go online and see some teachers kind of acted out uh, pandemonium. So if you're looking for something, again, the cute factor with little kids is so it's going to be rhyming dialogue. Hey, and another thing that we did this year that worked out so great, if you have the capability of doing this, you know, you go to these little kids shows so often, and you can never understand a word they say, even if they deliver their lines pretty well, the parents only really understand what their, their kid said, because they've heard them practice it at home a million times. We had the opportunity to do like sir titles over the stage, we had a screen above the kid's head and we had the entire script and all the lyrics of all the songs above the kid's heads the entire time. All of a sudden, the parents knew what was going on. It was the greatest thing. I'm like, why didn't we think of that before? If you have that capability, I would really recommend trying it sometime, especially one of your little kids musicals. Put all the script and all the lyrics up there. It just works out great. Um, anyway, our next musical review is one called Razama Jazz. This one um, 
I like it because it's a way of, we put a script together that that celebrates the different styles of jazz and bebop and um, swing. And with a little song that ties them all together called Razma Jazz. But some others others are jazz classics that you'd recognize from the Red Red Brown goes ba 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 and along and Bye Bye Blackbird, Birth of the Blues, Deck the Halls um, in a with a bossa nova beat and fidgety feet. And um, we, I, when I was back at Hal Leonard, I did a show called We Has Jazz with Kirby Shaw. It's out of print now, I think. But this is one of those where the kids get to play famous jazz characters. So they'll play Cab Calloway or they'll play somebody um, and they'll, they'll do research about their character. And that's the one they get to play on stage. So it's a great way of teaching the different styles of the jazz music, also putting together a little program. Really a simple one put together with a really infectious music. Um, if you're looking for a, a Veterans Day program, I sort of already mentioned it, but here's another a whole program called Salute. And it uses that, so, that song called Soldier, I Give My Thanks to You. And um, all these patriotic songs carried me with you, give my regards to Cohen, and a thankful gratitude song at the end. You can use any element of it. It has a little script that ties it all together to use for your um, program thing. I'm going to jump to Starbucks, the musical. This is for a little bit older kids. If you're looking for a musical for the holidays, um, Starbucks is that Oh, Rudolph got COVID or something and he can't um, pull the sleigh. So so he they have to have an audition. And basically they do a, America's Got Talent and they try to figure out which of the re other reindeer should pull the sleigh this night, this year. OK, and so um, basically it's it's just ridiculous, but fun. Um, Starbucks dancer has a song. He's trying to show that he should be able to do it. Prancer gets to do a song. And finally, you find out there's a reindeer rap that uses a bunch of them. And finally, you find out that this is true, that re, uh, male reindeer lose their antlers, females don't. Well, you can't have a reindeer pulling the sleigh that doesn't have any antlers. So obviously, it has to be, um, who would it be? Uh, Dasher, Dancer, Prancer, Vixen, who has to be the one that's going to pull the sleigh. This way. So, so I've heard so many people who have done this show last Christmas that it, we got so many wonderful comments about it. So if you're looking for something to do there. And the last one that I wanted to show you here was um, the High Seas musical. Again, back at Hal Leonard those days, Roger Emerson and I wrote a show called Pirates. And it was probably, I think it was the best-selling musical at Hal Leonard for many, many years. And so I just wanted to do a follow-up on that one. And for those of you who might have done Pirates, this is called The High Seas. And uh, it has pirates. It's got sailors. It has a song called, and one of the ships goes down. So we have sea creatures that come in. They do sort of an under the sea kind of number in which they rescue all the sailors. And finally, the sailors and the pirates, uh, we have a return of the, the, they're going to a singing contest. And we have a turn, they have the king of the high seas and the two join forces so that they get their choirs the best it can possibly be. And they um, they win the song contest because they work together to make beautiful music. Whew. Okay, I think I got through all of the ones that I wanted to show you today, all the newest ones. I will tell you that I'm working on a couple more. Um, I'm gonna stop sharing that and get back with you. I'm working on a few more right now that'll be out uh, this spring and excited to get to, to do that. So hopefully there's something in all of that that you can use. I was supposed to be done by 4.15 so you could ask questions. And so I'm a little late, but if anybody wants to ask about the musicals or anything else, um, I'm happy to address them. Do we have anything? I see some things in chat box, but I've not been following it. Uh -huh. I don't have any questions on my end. You um, can raise your hand or plug in if you've got anything. Is there anything in chat that will that I need to uh, address? Oh, some great ideas. I see that people are adding ideas. Um, right. People are sharing things. Hopefully you can all see that about, yeah. I mean, it, it is always a challenge to write musicals. It's what I love to do, um, but um, I will tell you, okay, I'll give you, I'll let you in a little secret. I'm working on one right now called Meow. And um, it starts like this. So I'm going to get so sued, but um, but it's really good fun to be about kittens and, and cats and all that. So I'll tell you more about that in a couple months when we get going. But um, I think we tried, like I said at the very beginning, we tried to make uh, is all of the elements as easy and accessible as you can. we can possibly do it. We try to tell you which um, 
maybe grade level they're most appropriate for, but I'm always sometimes hesitant to do that because sometimes you'll get these ones that we might think we wrote them for so your K2s, but for your particular situation, they might be perfect for your fourth and fifth graders. And so we don't like to label them too much that way because you know your kids more than others. And like that Starbucks musical, we, yeah, we had intended more of a sort of upper elementary, but I've had high school kids who have done our musicals. Um, because they can do them in a whole different way. You know, they'll take a musical like Starbucks or the high seas and the high school kids will put it together and then they'll travel around and go to the elementary schools and actually um, perform that musical for the little kids. I mean, it's a great way of getting the little kids excited about being in musical, maybe in middle school or in high school. So I don't, I don't think you need to be, just because we say it's meant for K2 and it might be, might be rhyming dialogue or whatever, you don't have to necessarily stick to those age limits. Feel free to explore them either way. Hopefully, you'll have a chance to kind of go through what I just had showed you, um, this whole this whole idea of going back to where you can go through each one of these musicals yourself. And um, I think I'm going to show you one more time how just to get to it. For those of you who came in late, this is your first dashboard page. I go to my Discover. Then I go to Musical Reviews. And I'm going to go over here to Units. And when I do Units, everything comes up. That page that you saw right before that, let me go right back one more minute, Discover. This one, when I first go to musical reviews, this is just all the songs that are in all the musicals. You can see there's a lot. So you might if that you might explore that if you're just looking for one song to do for a program or for something that not necessarily do a whole musical. Like here's the, the I Believe in Miracles. You might just want a song about miracles and not necessarily do the whole thing. It's really if you're just interested in going to um listen to and watch and and you'll see all the choreography and you'll see you can read the scripts and everything for any one of these musicals that you would go to here okay so hopefully that's a little bit um easier to find i think they've, they've been working so hard on the music play online uh website and i know there was a little bit clunkiness when it first got going but to me it's gotten so much more user friendly even in the last few weeks so hang in there and, and take get some time to sort of to really explore it and I think you'll be pleased at how much is there and how it's getting better sorted all the time in, in a way that we're going to be able to find, you'll be able to find things in a lot easier fashion. Um, all right. So I'll stop that. Okay. Back to me, I guess. I think. <laughs> Um, I do have one question here. Yeah, great. What do you have? Um, will you be at ILMEA this year? Uh, Illinois um, Music Education Association. Illinois? Uh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> I had to yes, think about you're there. On, I you're am, there on Thursday. I'm only there on Thursday. Um, I'm trying to get out of this window I'm in, but I'm only there on Thursday. And um, so I, cause I have Colorado music educators the same weekend. So I'm, I'm gonna be out Thursday and then Friday and Saturday to Colorado. For anybody else who's out there, I am also going to be doing New York and state of Washington. And I'm trying to think, um, I'm doing an all county course in Savannah, Georgia in October. And then for those of you who might be interested in America Sings, my nonprofit company, I hope that you will go to americasings.org and check it out. We're doing America Sings in May in Savannah, Georgia. And we have lots of elementary groups that come to it. And so you're more than welcome to join us there. If you can't bring kids, just bring yourself. Um, so I'm going to be doing an, uh, sort of a pre-concert in October in Savannah to kind of get the Savannah kids excited about America Sings, which will happen then in the uh, spring in May. So hopefully you'll, you'll, some of you will be a part of that. Anything else? All right. Um, just another one here. Could you oh. briefly go over, uh, sorry, could you briefly go back over your 10, 11 reason musicals are important? Sure. And Miguel, I see that you have asked, can you speak about One Planet? Um, yeah, Denise wrote that one. And I'm going to, she wants me to take a look at it in the next couple of weeks because she wrote it quite a while ago and a lot of people did it. It's about preserving our planet. And, um, and honestly, I haven't spent time with it yet. 
But Denise wrote it. It's been one a very popular one about um, preserving this one planet that we have. So that's why I didn't really go into it today because I have not. But but it's a good one and it's been very popular. And similarly is the um, uh, uh, one called Slapshot Santa. That's another. It's a Christmas one that uh, Denise has written and and it, she wrote it quite a while ago and it's it's done very very well. A lot of people have used it. So we're going to work on it and maybe update it a little bit. So um, that that's kind of why I skipped over those two today. We're they're sort of um, going to be one planet 2.0 real soon we hope and going over the the 10 things that the reasons that i came up for doing a musical just really quickly and then we're going to post this uh as a pdf i don't if it's of any use to you number one is that they're easy to do okay number two is that we they reinforce the curriculum in many instances um your musical can reinforce something they're learning in another class um they're great for just sparking in, in a learning process and kids getting kids um you know, getting the textbook and even your music textbook to come alive for kids. I think musicals can really do that. Number four was it's a great one for cross language and learning barriers for skip for your kids with um, special needs or your gifted kids or which are also special needs kids or your kids with a, a language issues. Um, it's a great one for that. Five was build classroom camaraderie. We're all working together to produce something beautiful. And um, number six was integrating the other arts, bringing art, speech, movement, theater, music um, into your curriculum, okay, uh, into your musical. Greater flexibility, we try to make, uh, I just put that in there because I want you to know that you have the flexibility to do whatever you want with these with our musicals. Eight, it's excellent for cooperation with your drama programs and the homeschool cooperatives. So we're getting, working with your drama program or your phi ed program or any of the other uh, elements of your school and bringing them in to be a part of it. A musical is a great way to do that. Nine was to increase parental involvement, which really, I mean, parents love to get involved and the more they're involved, the more supportive they'll be of your next efforts. And you'll know the ones who just make, I would just give you one caveat on that is that to make sure that you're the boss, you always maintain veto power that you, you have to be that you're the one that's going to make the final calls and that parents really have nothing to say about it. They're just there to help and make that real clear right off the bat. We're not really looking for your input. We just want you to sell costumes and paint sets. Um, otherwise, you can have a real nightmare. But you know what I mean? You, you know, the parents who you need to set up rules for parents in the same way you have to set up rules for kids. And number 10 was that they are just fun, educational, rewarding. And students and teachers and administrators and families all love the visibility of the kids being in musicals. And then I added that 11th one, which was what you learn through music, you don't forget, which I think is important. I gave the example of Lewis and Clark, but, and so you can learn like real concrete things like that. But most importantly, who's gonna teach them the really important things, the things about honor and courage and resilience and that it takes vigor to do something. And it takes some, you know, it takes, a lot of hard work to do something that's really rewarding and and just um caring for other people i mean those sort of those human traits that we can teach not just as good through music but better than any place else in their life because what you learn through music you don't forget so you learn about honesty or empathy or compassion and you learn that with music maybe it'll stick more than just some teacher at a blackboard, you know, preaching at you, or even a preacher in a, in, a, in a church preaching at you. You learn those life lessons through song, and I think they stick with you forever. And that's a great lesson, thing that a musical can provide. Anything else? Uh, we got one more here. If you were to prioritize some of the collaboration efforts you mentioned, the other arts, homeschool, and other cooperatives, parents, et cetera, what would you say, or what would that pecking order look like? My pecking order would first be the other faculty, I think. You know, getting the school involved, either your other teacher. You know, if, if no other reason than for your own sanity, it's so much more fun to teach when there's another adult in the room that you can roll your eyes at once in a while when something crazy happens. So, um, you know, I, I, would, I would first start getting your school as involved as possible. If you can, have, if you can talk your administrator into playing a role in your musical, like coming out as Hope in a fairy costume, you know, or whatever. Or there's one musical, for instance, that I um, did that has a lot, the, the Gnomes musical. There's a there's big lines of poetry that set it up that I had actually written with adults in mind because it sets up all sorry. If you had two adults, or I, I think I made it for three adults, three teachers, 
that are not the music teachers that would sit up there on stage and do those adult parts in the Gnomes musical. I think that would be a great way for the whole school to get involved. So that would be my number one thing. And then, you know, that kind of includes administrators as well. So teachers and administrators. And then probably next after that would be parent involvement. You know, getting them involved right after that, getting them excited about it, knowing that that there's going to be jobs for them to do, and that this and convincing them that you know what, yeah, we're we're really interested in STEM and all the important things, but but this might be the most important thing that your kid does at school this year, uh, even beyond science, technology, and and math. You know, it might very well be that this musical that they're in is a thing that's going to affect them more than anything else that they do in school this year. And having teachers on board with that or uh, parents on board with that. I, you know, one other thing I wanted to say, too, if you're not even a music play online subscriber, you can actually get these musicals, print copies of them. You just have to go to what is it? It's the um, uh, extra resources, I think, tab on your uh you see where I'm looking what it was. It was called uh, go to the um, discover tab and you can find these musicals. Like if you just want to buy Starbucks and, and have a hard copy of it, you might even want it just for your accompanist you, and you don't want to print it out. You can buy hard copies of these things right off Music Play Online. So that, that can be a really useful thing too. Um, did I answer that? Yes. All right. I think those are all of the questions that I have. Hey, well, you all have very, very busy lives. And I sure appreciate you giving up an hour of it for me today. And um, and I think if you're here, you're probably at least considering doing a musical. And I really want to encourage you to do that. And anything that we can do Music Play Online to help make your job easier, please let us know. Um, the Music Play team is phenomenal for trying to help teachers out and they get back to you really, really quickly. So if there's ever a problem in any one of these or something that we can do to make it easier, please let us know. And um, then send us lots of pictures of your musicals so that we can see. It's so rewarding to see what you're out there doing. And we appreciate you uh, so much. All right. Have a great rest of your evening, everybody. And thank you for joining. I really appreciate it so much. Have a great time.